Toki because um, the year of the rabbit when I moved there, but also um, because it's based on the lunar calendar. I always like the fable in Korea of Ok Toki or Dal Toki with uh, the rabbit living in the moon. And uh, you know, he's churning rice, making dok. And I thought that was, you know, kind of made sense for on a brewing standpoint as well. My name's Bran. I'm the owner and founder of Toki Soju. Um, I moved here from Korea where I was making traditional Korean alcohol for a while. And uh, when I moved back to the States, I couldn't really find like the good traditional stuff that's not exported here. So I um, started making it for a few friends restaurant and then uh, the Korean community uh, accepted it and kind of um, gave me the green light and asked me to start a brand. And so Toki Soju is about a year and a half old now. I started during the Lunar New Year of 2016. Uh, Toki is called Toki because it's based on, uh, Toki means rabbit in Korean by the way. And uh, it's based on my time in Korea, which was the year of the rabbit. Uh, and it was especially auspicious because it was the year of the golden rabbit, which happens every 600 years. So I thought it was a, a good name to pay uh, homage to my time in Korea. Uh, I moved to Korea in 2011 and I went to Gyeonggi University where I was making traditional Korean alcohol, uh, predominantly uh, Cheongju. Takju, makgeolli, um, sojus, and yakjus. Uh, I just kind of fell in love with it and thought it was um, really cool that it's not represented here in the US. So I'd, I'd never really had it. So um, when I moved back here, I took the head distiller position uh, at Van Brunt Stillhouse, where I did their whiskey and rum program for a couple years. And um, shortly after, they became a partner and we launched uh, Toki. And we do it here at Van Brunt Stillhouse as well. Uh, so soju was um, originally a, uh, a rice-based spirit, um, but in Korea now it has uh, many new different manipulations, everything from like sorghum, tapioca, and sweet potato. But um, this is a traditional style. Uh, my recipe that I do is kind of a Chosan dynasty style. Um, it's made entirely out of organic chapsar, and chapsar is a uh, short grain sweet rice um, from Korea. And um, I use nuruk, which is uh, kind of what, similar to what koji is to sake, is where it's, uh, it's a strand called Aspergillus orze. And uh, I cultivate it the way they do in Korea, off of wheat cakes, and um, use um, uh, wild yeast and then water, that's it. There's no additive sugars, chemicals, um, or anything in toki. Uh, it's totally clean, and that's why doesn't need to be refrigerated. You could drink it at room temperature um, and it'll still be fine because there's no additives. Uh, and then we do a special release every year with that animal of the Zodiac uh, for Take or Year of the Rooster. We did um, a fruit brandy made from Omija. And Omija is a Korean berry that means five flavored berry. Um, so it's kind of nice. It's not like a, a Western berry that we have where we equate sweetness to like strawberries or raspberries. Omija has uh, five flavors. It's kind of tart, bitter, sour, sweet, and spicy. Um, like Kind of like a black pepper spice. It's usually brewed in tea in Korea, but um, when I was in Korea and I was in Kawando, I would see people spiking their tea with soju, so I thought it would kind of be an interesting play to, to make the soju out of the omita. And uh, this is kind of a good representation of how a Korean fermentation happens. So it'll separate into two layers. The top layer is the Tongju layer, this is what gets distilled into soju. This bottom layer is the takchu layer. This is kind of the rice sediment. Um, and this is what gets made into makgeolli. This is, um, I already diluted this a little bit, so this is makgeolli, but so when you shake it up, that nice consistency. It's a live culture, so it still has some pressure, some CO2 there. And this is kind of like, I saw a guy making this particular style in Jolado in Korea, and I, I really liked it. Sometimes I make it with pear, sometimes with apple, but really good. I just fell in love with just the Korean culture that surrounds it. So I love the way Koreans drink opposed to the West. Like Koreans, like you sit down, the alcohol gets respect. You sit down, you pour for each other, you cheers with each other, you drink with each other. Uh, opposed to like Western culture where you just kind of go to a bar um, and you drink and I don't know, it can be very isolating and lonely sometimes. So 
I just like that, um, that it's always surrounded with community. And so the first time I had soju in Mako, I just kind of fell in love with the drinking culture behind it.